Christian Wolf, less correctly Wolf, German, VLF, also known as Wolfius, ennobled as Christian Freiherr von Wolf, the 24th of January 1679 to the 9th of April 1754, was a German philosopher. Wolf was the most eminent German philosopher between Leibniz and Kant. His main achievement was a complete oeuvre on almost every scholarly subject of his time, displayed and unfolded according to his demonstrative deductive, mathematical method, which perhaps represents the peak of Enlightenment rationality in Germany. Wolff was also the creator of German as the language of scholarly instruction and research, although he also wrote in Latin, so that an international audience could, and did, read him. A founding father of, among other fields, economics and public administration as academic disciplines, he concentrated especially in these fields, giving advice on practical matters to people in government, and stressing the professional nature of university education. Life Wolf was born in Breslau, Silesia now Wrocław, Poland, into a modest family. He studied mathematics and physics at the University of Jena, soon adding philosophy. In 1703, he qualified as private docent at Leipzig University, where he lectured until 1706, when he was called as professor of mathematics and natural philosophy to the University of Halle. By this time he had made the acquaintance of Leibniz the two men engaged in an epistolary correspondence, of whose philosophy his own system is a modified version. At Halley, Wolf at first restricted himself to mathematics, but on the departure of a colleague, he added physics, and soon included all the main philosophical disciplines. However, the claims Wolf advanced on behalf of philosophical reason appeared impious to his theological colleagues. Halley was the headquarters of Pietism, which, after a long struggle against Lutheran dogmatism, had assumed the characteristics of a new orthodoxy. Wolf's professed ideal was to base theological truths on mathematically certain evidence. Strife with the Pietists broke out openly in 1721, when Wolff, on the occasion of stepping down as pro-rector, delivered an oration, "...on the practical philosophy of the Chinese," Eng. Tr. 1750, in which he praised the purity of the moral precepts of Confucius, pointing to them as an evidence of the power of human reason to reach moral truth by its own efforts. On 12 July 1723 Wolff held a lecture for students and the magistrates at the end of his term as a rector. Wolf compared, based on books by the Flemish missionaries François Noël (1651–1729) and Philippe Couplet (1623–1693), Moses, Christ, and Muhammad with Confucius. According to Voltaire, Professor August Hermann Frank had been teaching in an empty classroom, but Wolf attracted with his lectures around 1,000 students from all over. In the following up, Wolf was accused by Frank of fatalism and atheism. As a consequence, Wolff was ousted in 1723 from his first chair at Halle in one of the most celebrated academic dramas of the 18th century. His successors were Joachim Lang, a pietist, and his son. His enemies had gained the ear of the King Frederick William I and told him that, if Wolff's determinism were recognized, no soldier who deserted could be punished, since he would only have acted as it was necessarily predetermined that he should. This so enraged the king that he immediately deprived Wolf of his office, and commanded him to leave Prussian territory within 48 hours or be hanged. The same day Wolf passed into Saxony, and presently proceeded to Marburg, Hesse Castle, to whose university, the university of Marburg he had received a call even before this crisis, which was now renewed. The Landgrave of Hesse received him with every mark of distinction, and the circumstances of his expulsion drew universal attention to his philosophy. It was everywhere discussed, and over 200 books and pamphlets appeared for or against it before 1737, not reckoning the systematic treatises of Wolf and his followers. According to Jonathan I. Israel, "...the conflict became one of the most significant cultural confrontations of the 18th century and perhaps the most important of the Enlightenment in Central Europe and the Baltic countries before the French Revolution." In 1726 Wolff published his Discours, in which he again mentioned the importance of listening to music put on pregnant Chinese women, and had reworded some on Moses. At the University of Marburg, as one of the most popular and fashionable university teachers in Europe, he increased matriculation figures within five years by about 50%. 
The Prussian Crown Prince Frederick defended Wolff against Joachim Lang and ordered the Berlin minister Jean Deschamps, a former pupil of Wolff, to translate Vernunftige Gedanken von Gott, der Welt und der Seele des Menschen, Ach allen Dingen überhaupt, into French. Frederick proposed to send a copy of Logic aux Reflections sur les Forces de l'Entendement Humain to Voltaire in his first letter to the philosopher from 8 August 1736. In 1737 Wolff's Metaphysica was translated into French by Ulrich Friedrich von Soom Voltaire got the impression Frederick had translated the book himself. In 1738 Frederick William begun the hard labor of trying to read Wolff. In 1740 Frederick William died, and one of the first acts of his son and successor, Frederick the Great, was to acquire him for the Prussian Academy. Wolff refused, but accepted on 10 September 1740 an appointment in Halle. His entry into the town on 6 December 1740 took on the character of a triumphal procession. In 1743, he became Chancellor of the University, and in 1745, he received the title of Freiherr Baron from the Elector of Bavaria. But his matter was no longer fashionable, he had outlived his power of attracting students, and his classrooms remained, while not empty, then certainly emptier than they had been during his heyday in Marburg. When Wolff died on 9 April 1754, he was a very wealthy man, almost entirely due to his income from lecture fees, salaries, and royalties. He was also a member of many academies and probably the first scholar to have been created hereditary baron of the Holy Roman Empire on the basis of his academic work. His school, the Wolfians, was the first school, in the philosophical sense, associated with a German philosopher. It dominated Germany until the rise of Kantianism. Philosophy Christian Wolff redefined philosophy as the science of the possible, and applied it in a comprehensive survey of human knowledge to the disciplines of his time. Wolfian philosophy has a marked insistence everywhere on a clear and methodic exposition, holding confidence in the power of reason to reduce all subjects to this form. He was distinguished for writing copies in both Latin and German. Wolf's teachings held virtually undisputed sway in Germany till the Kantian Revolution, and even after that, Wolf continued to be regarded as one of the most important philosophers from German-speaking lands. Until the 1960s, it was usually maintained by historians that Wolff's philosophy amounted to a common-sense adaptation or watering down of the Leibnizian system, or, more charitably, Wolff was said to have methodized and reduced to dogmatic form the thoughts of his great predecessor. The Wolfian system retains the determinism and optimism of Leibniz, but the monadology recedes into the background, the monads falling asunder into souls or conscious beings on the one hand and mere atoms on the other. The doctrine of the pre-established harmony also loses its metaphysical significance while remaining an important heuristic device, and the principle of sufficient reason is once more discarded in favor of the principle of contradiction which Wolff seeks to make the fundamental principle of philosophy. Wolff had philosophy divided into a theoretical and a practical part. Logic, sometimes called philosophia rationalis, forms the introduction or propedeutics to both. Theoretical philosophy had for its parts ontology or philosophia prima as a general metaphysics, which arises as a preliminary to the distinction of the three special metaphysics on the soul, world and God, rational psychology, rational cosmology and rational theology. The three disciplines are called empirical and rational because they are independent of revelation. This scheme, which is the counterpart of religious tripartition in creature, creation, and creator, is best known to philosophical students by Kant's treatment of it in the Critique of Pure Reason. In the preface of the second edition of Kant's book, Wolff is defined, the greatest of all dogmatic philosophers. Wolff was read by Kierkegaard's father Michael Peterson, and his son himself was influenced by both Wolff and Kant to the point of resuming the tripartite structure and philosophical content to formulate his own three stages on life's way. Practical philosophy is subdivided into ethics, economics, and politics. Wolff's moral principle is the realization of human perfection seen realistically as the kind of perfection the human person actually can achieve in the world in which we live. It is perhaps the combination of Enlightenment optimism and worldly realism that made Wolff so successful and popular as a teacher of future statesmen and business leaders. Works 
Wolf's most important works are as follows Dissertatio algebraica de algorithmo infinitesimale differentiale Dissertation on the algebra of solving differential equations using infinitesimals, 1704 Anfangsgrunde aller Mathematician Wissenschaften 1710, in Latin, Elementa Mathesios Universae 1713 Vernunftige Gedanken von den Kraften des Menschlichen Verstandes 1712. French translation by Jean des Chans, Logic, Berlin, 1736. English translation by Anonymous, Logic, London, 1770. Unfortunately, the English version is a translation of Des Champs's French edition instead of the original German of Wolf's Vernunftige Gedanken. Verne. Ged. von Gott, der Welt und der Seele des Menschen, Och Allen Dingen überhaupt. Verne. Ged. von der Menschen tun und lassen. Verne. Ged. von dem Gesellschaftlichen Leben der Menschen. Verne. Ged. von den Werkungen der Natur. 1723. Verne. Ged. von den Absichten der Naturlichen Dinge. 1724. Verne. Ged. von dem Gebroch der Thiel in Menschen, Theren und Flansen. 1725. The last seven may briefly be described as treatises on logic, metaphysics, moral philosophy, political philosophy, theoretical physics, teleology, physiology. Philosophia Rationalis, Sieve Logica 1728. Philosophia Prima, Sieve Ontologia 1730. Cosmologia Generalis 1731. Psychologia Empirica 1732. Psychologia Rationalis 1734. Theologia Naturalis 1736 to 1737. Kleine Philosophische Schriften, collected and edited by GF Hagen 1736 to 1740 Philosophia Practica Universalis 1738 to 1739 Just Natura and Just Gentium 1740 to 1749 Just Gentium Methodo Scientifica Pertractum The Law of Nations According to the Scientific Method 1749 Philosophia Moralis 1750 to 1753 Wolf's complete writings have been published since 1962 in an annotated reprint collection Jessamel T work Jean Ecole et al EDS 3 series German Latin and materials Hildesheim Zurich New York Olms 1962 This includes a volume that unites the three most important older biographies of Wolf An excellent modern edition of the famous Halley speech on Chinese philosophy is Oratio de Sinarum Philosophia Practica, Read über die Praktische Philosophie der Chinesen, Michael Albrecht, ed. Hamburg, Minor, 1985. See also Mons Wolf, Warzeniak Mitzler de Koloff Notes Topic References Topic Sources Blackwell, Richard J. Christian Wolf's Doctrine of the Soul. Journal of the History of Ideas, 1961, 22 to 339-354, in JSTOR. Kor, Charles A. Christian Wolf and Leibniz. Journal of the History of Ideas, April 1975, Vol. 36 Issue 2, pp. 241-262 in JSTOR Goebel, Julius. Christian Wolff and the Declaration of Independence. In Deutsch-Amerikanische Geschichtsblätter. Jarbeck der Deutsch-Amerikanischen Gesellschaft von Illinois 1819 JG, 1918-19, Chicago, Deutsch-Amerikanische Gesellschaft von Illinois, 1920, pp. 69-87, details Wolf's impact on the Declaration of Independence. Jolly, Nicholas, ed. The Cambridge Companion to Leibniz Cambridge University Press, 1995, the standard source in English, includes biography and details of his work in many fields. Richards, Robert J. Christian Wolff's Prolegomena to Empirical and Rational Psychology, Translation and Commentary. 
Proceedings of the American Philosophical Society Vol. 124, No. 3 the 30th of June 1980, pp. 227–239 in JSTOR Vanzo, Alberto. "'Christian Wolf and Experimental Philosophy". Oxford Studies in Early Modern Philosophy 7. European Journal of Law and Economics 4 2, Summer 1997, Special Issue on Christian Wolff, reprinted 1998 in the Jessamelty work, Third Esser, note especially the essays by Jürgen G. Backhaus, "'Christian Wolff on Subsidiarity, the Division of Labour, and Social Welfare". Wolfgang Drexler, "'Christian Wolff' 1754, a biographical essay. Eric S. Reinert and Arno Mong Dastel, "...exploring the genesis of economic innovations, the religious gestalt switch and the duty to invent as preconditions for economic growth," and Peter R. Sen, "...Christian Wolf in the pre-history of the social sciences." This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911, "...Wolf, Christian." Encyclopædia Britannica. 28 11th ed. Cambridge University Press Topic. External links Works by or about Christian Wolff at Internet Archive Christian Wolff's Ontology, Existence as Complement of Possibility Selected Bibliography on the Metaphysical Works of Christian Wolff Wolff from Hegel's Lectures on the History of Philosophy